Hello and welcome to Philosophy Vibe, the channel where we discuss and debate different philosophical ideas. Today we're going to be looking back to the works of Plato and focusing on his theory of forms. In order to understand the theory of forms, we first need to understand Plato's analogy of the cave. If you haven't done so, please visit the channel to watch the video. But John, give us a quick recap. Well, Plato asks us to imagine a group of prisoners trapped in an underground cave since birth. They are tied to the floor and the rulers of the cave burn a fire behind them and project shadows on the wall. The prisoners believe this is life. This is the only reality that they know. One day, a prisoner gets loose and manages to leave the cave, and he perceives the world outside of the cave for the first time. He sees the sun in the sky, the trees, the animals, etc. He realises that there is a greater reality than the one he had been perceiving his whole life. There is a greater world beyond the one he knew. Exactly. Now this concept of a greater world is central to Plato's theory of forms. We here perceive this material world that we have known our entire lives. We perceive this material world through our senses, each individual person with their own senses. We take this to be the only reality, the true reality. But is it really? The world is forever changing. People's senses perceive different things. Your perception of beauty or justice may differ with mine. How can we understand universal truth in such a reality? Plato argued that this material world is the world of appearances. Just like the prisoners in the cave, what we perceive are the shadows of an even greater reality. There exists a greater world, a world beyond space and time, that Plato called the world of forms. Right. What we perceive in the material world is not the truth. What we perceive is a lesser reality, merely the shadows of the forms. Plato claimed that a form was an abstract property. It is the perfect version of any object or idea that exists in the material world. It is the pure, eternal and unchanging greater entity. What do you mean? Let's say we both have an idea of something. We'll say a cat. We're walking down the street and I see a cat. I point to it and say, look, a cat. A few minutes later, you see a different cat but you can also point to it and say, look, a cat. Now we have seen two different things, but both understand them to be the same type of thing, namely a cat. There is therefore a separate concept or idea of a cat that we both have. It is not associated specifically to this cat or that cat, but more so a broader idea of a cat or of what qualities make something a cat. We shall say cattiness qualities. Okay. Well, this greater concept is the form of a cat. It is the single most perfect version of a cat that exists in the world of forms. The cats we see and recognise are just representations or shadows of this perfect cat form. Right, I see. We could also use this with another material object. Let's say a chair. I'm sitting on a chair and you're sitting on a chair. These chairs are completely different, yet we both recognise them as chairs. So then there would exist in the world of forms a form of a chair. There exists the perfect chair in which we perceive imperfect representations of. Exactly. Now Plato then divided up a hierarchy with the world of appearances and the world of forms. At the bottom of the hierarchy are what we know of as the shadows in the material world, the shadows of the material objects. Next up the list is the material world itself and the material objects we perceive. After that, we enter into the world of forms and we have the lower forms. These are the forms of the material objects, like we saw with the chair and the cat. Yes. Then we move on to the higher forms. What are they? Well, let me ask you. Have you looked at something and thought it was beautiful? Of course. Have you ever believed that justice was served or not served? Yes, I have. So, you recognise the concepts of beauty and justice. Yes, I do. And so do most people. Yet their idea of beauty and justice might be completely different to yours. You might look at a painting and think it's beautiful, and another may think it was horrible. Okay, but what's your point? Well, both of you have the same concept, but perceive it differently. Concepts like beauty and justice and truth have their own perfect form, 
and these are the higher forms. Somewhere in the world of forms exists the perfect version of beauty. And every time we see a beautiful person or a beautiful painting, we are perceiving the shadows of the perfect form of beauty. Higher forms are then forms of larger ideas, as opposed to physical or material objects. Okay, I understand. However, if there is a perfect form of everything, would there not be a perfect form of a perfect form? And therefore, it would ultimately bring everything to a singular form. That is correct. As we work our way up the hierarchy, we reach the top point, and that is the form of forms. And Plato claimed this was the form of good. Good in its most purest perfect form is the supreme form, and the form that everything else derives from. Plato argued that the good flowed down, and everything we strive for is to bring us closer to the perfect good. Interesting. Now that we've run through the theory of forms, I would like to mirror our relation to the world of forms with the prisoner's relation to the material world. So then, the shadows the prisoners perceived become our material objects. The cave becomes our material world, and outside the cave becomes the world of forms. The material objects the prisoner saw become our forms. The sun then becomes the highest supreme form of good, and the escaped prisoner becomes the philosopher, the one who explores outside the material world to find answers and reach the truth. Very interesting theory. The parallels with the theory of forms and the allegory of the cave are brilliant, but I can see some problems with the theory of forms. What's that? Well, firstly, we have never actually experienced the world of forms, no one has any knowledge or proof of it. However, when I look at something, I can still recognize beauty. I can still recognize truth. How can I have this understanding if I have no experience of the form of beauty or truth? Good point. Plato does look into this. Firstly, it's important to note, Plato was in most respects a dualist. He believed the soul and the body were separate entities. Whereas the body was contingent and mortal, the soul was eternal. Because of this, the soul has experiences with the world of forms and has come from the world of forms. Once it is in the body and bound by the material world, it forgets most of this knowledge but still has the innate understanding. And that is why you do not have the knowledge of the form of beauty, but you still have this innate understanding and can recognize it based on the experiences of the soul. Right, I see. And your soul, also referred to as the mind, wants to carry on exploring out of the physical body and get closer to the world of forms. Okay, but still, this relies on dualism being true, and there are a lot of problems with this theory as well. Agreed. Also, to what extent do we take forms? If there is a perfect form of everything, would this include weird or trivial things? Like what? Well, can we say in the world of forms, there exists the perfect form of dog poo? This is the perfect version of dog poo that exists. This seems a bit weird. Hmm. And can this be extended to evil things as well? In the world of forms, is there the form of evil? We know evil exists in our world. So is there then the perfect form of evil in the world of forms? And if there is, how can this derive from the form of good? The form of good sits on top of the hierarchy, so then the form of evil would have to stem from this. Yes, I see your point. And finally, I feel there is not enough explanation of what the forms would be. I know the forms exist beyond space and time, but ultimately they are versions of material objects. So what colour would the cat form be? Would the form of the chair have cushions, or will it be made of wood? It seems there is very little to actually understand on the world of forms, and a lot to disagree on. Yes, I can see the problem. Well, that's all the time we have for now. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed the vibe. If you did, please like, share, and if you haven't done so, please subscribe. We look forward to seeing you all soon for some more philosophy debates. Bye-bye.